Well, just manage by objective. Solve as you go, because you're not gonna see all the problems, but keep going towards the vision. Welcome to the Strength Connection Podcast, a show to share stories, insights, and experiences in strength, physically, mentally, and spiritually. I'm Michael Krukowski, host of the Strength Connection, and I'm so grateful that you can join me today. So in these episodes, I connect with some of the most inspiring and successful individuals to chop it up and learn from true life experiences that have helped them become who they are, the strongest versions of themselves. One of the greatest ways I've always learned the most important lessons is through stories. We all have them and they make us who we are. So let's dive in, here we go. All right, let's have some fun. What's up guys? Welcome back to The Strength Connection. I'm Michael Krakowski. For another episode, it's you and me. This is a solo episode, and let's dive right in. All right, so it was a busy week of recordings. Got some really fun episodes that are going to be coming up with some really cool coaches and mentors. And uh, just want to recap from this past week and then dive into a few of the key phrases that I've been thinking about deeply from some of the last episodes. So this past week, um, if you didn't check the last episode, I was with Pamela Nygaard. Um, talked about this briefly last week, and This was one of the most interesting conversations that I have had recently on the podcast. Uh, Pamela, I didn't know much about her, a great friend who I've known for a while, who is in the world a lot of technology as well as the holistic medicine world. He reached out to me and said, you should connect with Pamela. Uh, She's doing some amazing work with her company, Genexi Health, on medical AI, artificial intelligence. And we chatted for a bit before we did the recording. I just wanted to know a little bit more about it. And the stuff that she was telling me of what she's worked on over the past couple decades, putting this program uh, together in this company, Genexi Health, uh, it was just fascinating. And when we got on the podcast and she started telling me about the origins of how this just journey started for her, uh, her story of when she was 14 years old and Uh, She was with her grandmother. Her grandmother was pretty much told that she had to go home to die. She was sick and uh, had just days to live or so. And from some research um, going out, there was actually a place down in Mexico that had some different types of procedures that they could do. And they said, kind of like, let's give it a shot. What do we got to lose? Grandmother went down there, lived another 16 years afterwards. And, you know, there's a lot of stories that, you know, we've we've heard about these incredible things. And then some doctors who maybe get the diagnosis is wrong. And it kind of made her question about what makes the people down in Mexico with this know how to solve this and the other doctor not. And came to the realize of there's so much information, there's so much new research and stuff coming out in the medical field at all times it's virtually impossible for one doctor, anybody to know everything that's going on. So she started building this program, Genexi Health, which essentially is a uh, AI system that you go in, you answer all these questions based on where you live, the symptoms that you have, what you're trying to do. And it gives you a baseline of where your health is, where your deficiencies could be within your body, uh, how to work this in. It doesn't tell you like about, you know, you should get off this medication or anything like that doesn't say that it just gives you more of baseline uh, information. And that's overall kind of her message that she talked about is she just wanted to build something where all the information, the best information for medicine can be centralized into one specific spot. And it's impossible to do it from doctor to doctor, the best way to do it is through a technological system. And that's what she's doing. And as she explained more and more about this, this is a, a revolutionizing thing that's going to be happening. Um, and we've heard about AI, all the stuff that it's doing with productivity and business. I've used ChatGPT and played around with it. It is incredible stuff, and it is the next wave of the future in a lot of different fields. One of them very specifically is going to be the medical field. So if you're interested at all about this on a medicinal purpose or just this general information, this is going to be a new wave of the future. So I encourage you to go back, listen to Pamela. I'm going to have her back on the podcast hopefully soon because we talked a lot about you know air and water toxins and we really didn't get to dive deep into it. And we're going to go into a lot more of the findings uh, that they found uh, from it. So that's out now. Go check it out. And uh, yeah, so moving, moving forward. All right, so the messages that I had, as I um, mentioned last week on my solo episode, is there's been so many great quotes and phrases from the people that I've got to connect with and interview on the podcast. And oftentimes, like my routine is after an interview, I'll go for a walk, I'll kind of 
just digest the conversation that I just had. And there's oftentimes these quotes or things that make me think a little bit deeper on how I can utilize that in my own life, how I can use it in my business with the clients I work with. And on these episodes, I wanted to share some of them. So the first one actually comes from a recording that I did this week that's going to be released next week with Rick Mayo. Um, if you don't know Rick, he's a pioneer in the personal training business. He's been around since 1992 when he first opened Alloy uh, Fitness. I had him on the podcast about a year ago when he was celebrating 30 years in the business with Alloy and he was just working with the franchising of the company. And recently this past uh, winter, him and his team celebrated 100 franchises awarded uh, from Alloy. So I asked if he would come back on the podcast and talk about, you know, the lessons that he learned from going into this new venture. You know, Rick is a serial entrepreneur. He's been doing it forever. He's a visionary. Um, he really leads from the front. So I always learn so much when I get to connect with him. And the thing that he mentioned in one of the lessons uh, really hit me, and we were talking about a little bit deeper, is the difference between doing your best versus doing what's required. And, you know, it was it's interesting because I talk a lot about doing your best with what you have every day. You know, you can do your best even if you're not at your best. And I think it's prevalent. I think it's good information. But this goes into a different um you know, kind of mentality as well. And we were talking about it where he said like, hey, not everybody is cut out for entrepreneurship. He's seen it in uh, in his work where sometimes doing your best, maybe if it's not your skill set or you're using it as an excuse, it's not really something that is best for you where you need to figure out what is required in order to get the goals that you have down first and then kind of work backwards from that. So sometimes what your, you know, what your best is, is not good enough. And I kind of was like, yeah, that's absolutely true. And it made me think even different is when we're in a new journey, or if we're trying to achieve something that we haven't done before, oftentimes we don't know what our best is. You know, if you're, if you've never exercised before, or got into a fitness program and you say, well, I'm going to do my best. Well, you actually don't know what your threshold is. You need to figure that out. Sometimes you need to push a little bit past the envelope to know like where kind of that middle ground is where you can sustain it on a day by day basis, especially as I said, when it comes to brand new things. So Rick was talking about this in the context of, you know, new business owners opening up franchises and saying, okay, there's a lot of stuff you need to, you know, know the area, you need to know where you're going to build, you need to get all the tax stuff down, you need to get the accounts all set, like a lot of things that maybe you haven't done before. And it's going to challenge your bandwidth um, a lot better. So you need to know what is required in order to get the goal that you want and then work towards that over and over again. So this was, you know, there's a very common term I remember when I first got into management where it was, you know, kind of at the time when I was a first manager, I was a young person. I didn't, I've never worked, you know, people never worked for me before. So it was a nerve wracking time. And I remember my mentor at the time was just like, well, just manage by objective. And I was like, what does that mean? And it's a common term now, and I understand it, but I didn't hear of it before. And he's like, all right, these are the things that we want to accomplish and work on. Okay, manage towards that every day and work on improvement. And it's like, that's the only focus on your management time is to work towards this goal, manage by objective. And I was like, okay, that really kind of gave me a good framework and a good um, blueprint to you know, use the time that I had allocated towards getting this. And I think it's a powerful thing to do. And then I realized, okay, I could put my best effort, my best focus, you know, uh, towards this objective and sh slowly but surely I started to accomplish it. So I think if we're looking at that term doing our best, what can we control in that situation? Maybe it's something we haven't done before. So we're going to learn a lot, you know, down the road, but the things that you can do, the things that we should always do is eliminate distractions, set your environment up the best way, plan ahead as much as possible. And then again, know what is required to do so. So that might be talking to somebody who's done it before, see what they did. Okay, what can I do now? And then you keep building your best up. You know, that's kind of the thing that your best is not a set point, like what your best is today is going to be different than what your best is six months from now or six or another, you know, year down the line, like your best keeps accruing over time, with the more experience and the more energy you put into something. It's not something that is just, you know, set and all right, this is my best. And this is all that I've got. No, it's going to continue over and over again, as you learn more and more. So it was just great to hear Rick's point of view on this. And uh, it really made me ponder and I really appreciate it from him. So, and again, that episode is going to be dropped next week. So you can check that out uh, early in the week. All right. 
So the next one I wanted to go over was when I had Blake Castle on the podcast. Um, this was, I believe, episode 148 that I had with Blake. Um, Blake is an interesting guy. He created the resistance band program, Body Elastics. Um, you've either probably heard of it, or if you haven't, you probably used the resistance band before. It's like the number one resistance band exercise program in the world. He does incredible live videos with it. The product is amazing. And when Blake was on, we went really through the entire journey of how we created this program and really the evolution of it. And the one thing that really stood out to me was, you know, one of the phrases that he said was, you know, solve as you go, because you're not going to see all the problems, but keep going towards the vision. So kind of to give some context behind that is when he had this vision of what he wanted Body Elastics to be, all of a sudden he had, there was a purchasing order issue. He didn't realize that. Then there was other issues that popped up with the production of it. Um, the first product that he had, the bands were really kind of shitty. And then the handles of it, they were scraping. They were like not feeling good in the hands and he was testing it over and then they needed to change it over and over again. And there was a million other examples that he said with um, this program and they kept having to add a little bit more improvement over and over again during the time. The, he didn't see all these problems ahead of time. There's impossible to do so because you need to get to certain steps in order to see what are the next steps that you need to do to build a vision and keep going from there. And I think, I don't know if he said this on the podcast or if he said it off air, but he said like, you know, if you know all the problems that you are going to face at the beginning, you're probably not going to do it <laughs> because it's so much effort and so much energy that it's going to take to do it that you almost kind of be like insane to then just go in full force. It's like the best thing you have to do is you have to have your vision. What do you want to achieve from it? And then work back for some, it's just work step by step. The problems are going to pop up and you just work on them one by one as you go. But that's how you build a top quality program, a top quality life, which is what Blake's done with Body Elastics. And yeah, it was super powerful when he said that. And the journey, again, as we talk, like it was so many issues that kept arriving from, you know, different places that he was producing the bands, uh, so on and so forth. So again, like what your vision is, just make sure that's crystal clear and then just work with it and solve problems as you go. I thought that was super powerful from Blake. All right. And then the last one I want to talk about here today is when I had Adam Rodriguez on. Adam was one of my favorite people that I've talked to. Um, I got a chance to meet Adam in Texas earlier this year at the, the Meta Summit from Metaplexus. And his story of his life and what he's created with his company, but just overall in his life from his time in the military, from his early on uh, stages in life, it is one of the most inspiring stories I've heard from a human being. And um, I think that was episode 152, if you want to reference that and go back and listen to it. But what he talked about, which really hit me was quality focus trumps quantity of activity. And for the context on that is Adam is, uh, he's a veteran. He was in combat. He suffered a traumatic brain injury and where when he came home, he suffered from a lot of different ailments, depression, suicidal thoughts. Um, and this went on for years. I think it was like 12, 13 years that this happened. During the time though, he was starting new businesses. He was going into new ventures and he is a smart guy, a very passionate guy. So he succeeds in everything that he puts his mind to, but he kept having these moments of he would go full force, you know, 24 seven for a month or a couple months. And then his body would start to shut down. His mind would start to shut down and he would have to revert all the way back where he like couldn't get out of bed. Like it was physically like painful and it couldn't, he could not work anymore at this time. So finally he went to, you know, a doctor to see this again. He went through a lot of different, you know, um, you know, medicinal journeys, but found out that with this TBI is he can only focus for a few hours a day at the most. Otherwise, this spiraling effect is just going to keep happening to him. So he talked about his uh, time when he started building his company where he could only work for a small block of time, three, maybe four hours in the morning every day. And for a guy who was used to working all day, every day and putting 100% effort in throughout the entire, you know, day, you know, dust till dawn, he, it was a hard challenge. And, but he started to see like people would change their schedules to make sure that they got in. And he kept that block of time, what it was, it was a non-negotiable for him. And what he's done now with his business with Metaplexus and, you know, in the first year being a $5 million company, you know, and just, and continuing to go upwards and onwards from there is 
in that few hours a day, he knows like, okay, this is my only time I can work today. I have to have an intense focus and get everything that I need to done in that time. But what we realize is how much you can get done when you focus in that short period of time. And it just made me think there's so many different lessons that you can learn from that. You know, that's why I think specific training like kettlebell training is so powerful because you can get a lot done in a short period of time when you really focus in going back to what I talked about with doing your best, like setting up your environment so that you eliminate distractions. You're doing exactly what you need to do at that time. And I remember my former friend, we were talking about this with writing, like it's oftentimes how long something takes you to do is about how much time you allow it to take in order to do. Like if you know you need to write something out in 15 minutes, you'll get it done in 15 minutes because that's the only time you have and you eliminate everything else and you just put you know blinders on and you get that done. Adam's example of this, of only being able to work for three, four hours a day was so powerful. And how many of us are going through our entire days kind of feeling like we've done so much during the day, but in reality, it's like half focused and it's half assed. So you can actually probably get all of what you actually accomplished done in eight to 10 hours done in three or four hours. And that was just, just another just beautiful example from Adam of how much focus, the quality of how you can focus is such a skill set that you can continually develop on. I know that's something that personally I'm working on more and more. Like I'd rather just really focus in for a few hours a day and then just let my mind just open up. I feel better during that time. It allows me to be more free in my life and do all the things that I love and enjoy from there. So I encourage you to go back, listen to Adam on that one as well, because oftentimes if you can eliminate a little bit more distractions and put a little bit more quality into your focus, you're going to realize you're getting a lot more good stuff done in a short period of time. All right. So with that, let's close it out. Thanks so much guys for listening. Appreciate it. Can't wait to jump on here and talk to you again soon. And uh, yeah, I'm going. Talk to you soon. Peace. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some great value here. And if you like this episode, please drop a comment and leave us a five-star rating and review. It does more to build the show than you can imagine. And do not forget to check out and join the Strength Connection Facebook group. In this group, I share the biggest takeaways and lessons from these amazing conversations, as well as training and strength tips for pursuing mastery and fulfillment in life. It's, this group is filled with individuals looking to take full control over their strength, and it's the perfect space to explore new ideas and to share your journey. And you'll also get exclusive access to the Strength Connection Mastery Seminars. It's a deep dive into the physical, mental, and spiritual training that you can begin using immediately. So do not wait. Go now. Seriously, go. I right, much love to you. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.